He's a fun guy, but he's also very serious. He's a very good teacher. He's an inspiring figure. He doesn't want to waste time. He exposed us to a lot of good questions. It's definitely a great privilege to be able to take a class with Professor Sargent. He expects his students to, to work really hard. Tom works in mysterious ways. <laughs> Tom's a, a titan of the profession. Tom believes in bringing the life of the mind to students in a very serious way. The importance of having Tom come to NYU um, cannot be overstated. First and foremost, obviously, was his scholarship, which has now been celebrated in the prize. But that's not the only reason he was terrific for the place. The other two reasons were number one, he had a terrific reputation for being a wonderful mentor. And the second thing he had a terrific reputation for was his love of and dedication to teaching. There are a lot of people in economics who think about theory and models, and then there are another group of people who start from the data and they say, what conclusions can we draw from that? Figuring out how to get those two to meet in meaningful ways is a very difficult but really fruitful middle ground. And so then bringing the two of these together helps us understand the what happened and the why. And that's really um, where Tom has spent a lot of his career, is trying to, to match models and data. Tom is a, a builder. Tom builds intellectual architecture, and he's very interested in thinking about the long run trajectory of developing serious thinkers. And Tom cares only about getting to the right answer. It's like he's. He sees economics as a, something fun to do, in some sense like a game, and I see it, I see it that way. Although it's, it's talking about serious stuff and, and real stuff that matters a lot. I met Tom pretty early on in my career at Stanford, and I was desperately trying to get some feedback on this, uh, on this paper I've been working on for quite a long time, actually. And Tom said to me, I'll never forget, he said, you know, if you do this right, people are going to really pay attention. To me, that's quintessential Tom Sargent taking aside a young scholar and really devoting some of his personal time to mentoring them. I think the message that he wants to convey uh, to, his, to his students is um, it's tough starting in this field. It's really tough. You get a lot more rejection than it acceptances and you just got to keep plugging away at it. And if you keep plugging away, even I think he wants to convey to us, even I made it. And of course, we all know that, that it's Tom and, and he's got some extraordinary skills and so we don't quite believe it. They would go like that. I had no idea what was going on. And then my friend Inku Cho taught me large deviations theory. And, and then you do the math, and it's exactly that. So. Yeah. I think he wants to make us believe that anybody, this could be anybody if we just keep plugging away and working hard and putting in our best day after day. He might be preparing his Nobel lecture, or, but he still had time to go to class or to have students go to his office and talk to him. That shows how important teaching is to him and advising is to him. And also shows you the kind of person he is. Tom was my uh, advisor as a PhD student. He tries to let students teach each other. And I think in doing that, he tries to give us confidence in what we've learned and being able to express it to other people, uh, to our peers. And then he intervenes in little critical moments in subtle ways to keep us sort of on track and to, to, to make sure that, that we got it right. You go to a reading group and you're given your 20 minute presentation of someone else's work. And at some point, you might say something that's not exactly precise. And he would stop and say like, say that again, but he's just trying to make you think carefully about what you say every single time. And that's kind of like Tom's signature style. I think one of the first things I read about in, in Macro was uh, um, his, his one of his papers on hyperinflation. So despite being such a known figure to me, I've always felt this feeling of, of closeness with, with him because he's such a friendly person, such a humble person. So were you here during her presentation? <laughs> <laughs> He's definitely a very funny and entertaining professor. Despite the material, some of it is pretty dry, but I think he makes it very engaging all the time. You can't be lazy. I, I think that that's something that he doesn't like. He doesn't underestimate his students. Not a bit. He's a very good listener. Through listening, I think that he shapes students. And by example, you see him working, then it inspires you to work harder. 
He really tries to be someone who sets the agenda, sets the standards high, and so he's not just teaching us the material, but it's more teaching us the skills to go figure out the answers on our own, which is, in the end, much more valuable. He kind of gave us wings and then set us off to, to go fly. Tom, I would like to congratulate you on this prize. It's a very, very well-deserved prize. But mostly, I'd like to thank you for all the time and effort that you put in working with me. Hi, Professor Sargent. Just want to congratulate you again for winning the Nobel Prize. I think I represent the rest of my class when I say that you have been a great mentor to us in the short time that you've taught us. And then we, we greatly appreciate what um, the direction that you've brought us in. And we definitely wish you all the best in your future endeavors. Professor, I, there's hardly ways in which I can thank you for all you've done for me. And um, I owe my career to you.